in today's episode of the competition is coming and then saying i'm sorry that's never happened before uh uh uh, uh sorry Ford has halted shipments of all 2024 model year F-150 Lightnings over an undisclosed quality issue. The stop sale started two weeks ago and Ford doesn't yet know when it will be lifted. So we're going to talk about this, kind of important. This is, quote, the competition. You know, the competition that had decades and decades of producing vehicles and therefore would certainly come for Tesla and then dominate Tesla and Tesla's in trouble and just you wait. This is the Ford who have now, it's been previous battery issues and all sorts of stuff, this has been an absolute disaster, the F-150 Lightning, have now stopped shipping any F-150 Lightnings produced that are model year 2024 due to a quality issue. They've literally stopped shipping them until further notice. This isn't a little, oh, we'll better send out an over-the-air software update. They're no longer shipping them. What an absolute train wreck. I mean, dude, the F-150 is the best-selling vehicle line in the United States year after year after year for decades. Ford's best opportunity was to produce a compelling product for a reasonable price and massively ramp up production before Cybertruck launched. And things appeared to start okay. F-150 Lightning beat Cybertruck to market by, what, give or take about two years? But it's been an absolute shit show since. And now, as Cybertruck deliveries ramp up and Cybertruck is now the A-list celebrity, paparazzis are now chasing around Cybertrucks as opposed to the celebrities driving them, it's now the head turner. Ford aren't even delivering their so-called Cybertruck competitor. This is the worst possible scenario. More proof that the competition is coming all over themselves embarrassingly fast and not for Tesla. As we can see on screen now, adult film star Kim Kardashian leaving Starbucks in her Cybertruck. Now, it was only a few years ago that I actually found out who Kim Kardashian was. I definitely live in a bubble. But I've since seen Many, many photographs, stories from her Instagram reels or some other social media where she's showing off her Cybertruck, picking up the kids from school, etc. This is now her daily driver. I can understand why. And Kim Kardashian is not the only one. Now think for a moment, by the way. If you're a rich AF, do you even need to leave your house? No. Do you need to leave your house to buy coffee? Of course you fucking don't. So why do you leave your house? Answer, to be seen. Why do you leave your house in a Cybertruck? To be seen in your Cybertruck. This is not an accident. This is like compounding celebrity status with a celebrity vehicle. And it's clearly working. I did predict this. Remember, guys, I said A-list celebrities, actors, athletes, etc., rappers, they're going to all be driving. Yep, remember I said that was going to happen? And there'd be heaps of coverage. Well, this is exactly what's happening right now. I saw this great post from a Cybertruck fangirl over on X. Pharrell, Lady Gaga and Kim Kardashian all showing off their Cybertrucks. Who's next? And again, these people are not stupid, nor do they need to be appearing in public, okay? If they really want coffee, they can send somebody to go get them some coffee or order it on Uber Eats, right? So why? It's to be seen in the Cybertruck. This is a massive flex. And what do you think happens when fans of Pharrell or I don't even know how to say the dude's name. No offense, again, again, I live in a bubble. Or Lady Gaga or Kim Kardashian see this thing, see their idol driving this thing and think, huh, they've got one of these. looks pretty weird, but they're pretty cool. I adore them. Maybe I'll get one. It's going to take a long time until probably hundreds of thousands of Cybertrucks are on roads in the United States, if not more, before this thing stops turning so many heads. Meanwhile, I don't see too many A-list celebrities in their F-150 Lightnings, or am I just not noticing it? Of course, Cybertruck is probably the least exciting thing currently happening at Tesla, although it's probably getting the most attention, at least from the public. The thing that's getting the least attention from the general public, but far and away the most exciting thing, at least from a Tesla investor's point of view, is FSD. A user posted a video, which was reposted by Ashok Elaswamy, in case you don't know, that Ashok autopilot slash AI at Tesla, who said, this is the sort of driving that's really hard to code explicitly, but our end-to-end approach brings in almost effortlessly. So quick recap in case you guys don't know, a little while ago, From the ground up, Tesla completely rebuilt FSD. Instead of coding in, hard coding, a bunch of explicit rules, here's what to do in this situation, that situation, they literally fed it a bunch of video, a fuck ton of video from Tesla's fleet of good human driving. And it learned to drive without any rules, just by observing good driving behavior. Here's one of the emergent properties. And yes, I did use the term emergent property intentionally. The original post, FSD V12 avoids standing water. Let's watch this very short clip, keeping in mind that There's no hard coding in here on how to do this. The car 
is seeing the real world, perceiving, and determining the best course of action based on its understanding of what good human drivers do. This is something you most certainly will not see a cruise or Waymo vehicle doing, ever. I said ever. Dangerous word. I stand by that. So, that's pretty wild, pretty impressive, and again, not bad for an emergent property. You will note, by the way, a good human driver who isn't an absolute hat will do likewise. Now, that's not to say that your car's going to explode and kill people if you drive through a standing body of water, but you know what? When the option's there to avoid driving through a huge puddle, which may be hiding a few things that could puncture tires, or worse, happens to be situated in the perfect place to drench a bunch of pedestrians on the side of the road, the best thing any considerate and intelligent driver will do is not drive through the puddles. And it's very important. Tesla did not program their cars with an explicit line of code. See puddle, drive around if safe to do so. Cars learn this from watching good human drivers. One of countless examples of Tesla's incredible real world AI. If you know, you know, and if you don't, well, that's fine. <laughs> I'll talk to you in a few years time. Speaking of Tesla's FSD, you guys recall recently, if you're a regular viewer, I talked about hockey stick moments in AI. Remember that? Multiple times now, it seems to come out of absolutely nowhere. It's happened with image generation, language, and now video as well from text-based prompts. And also, I suggested quite strongly that this is likely to also occur with other forms of AI, possibly including, uh, wait for it, autonomy. Well, here's a short clip from Brad Kirstner. You might have seen him filling in on the All In podcast occasionally who tried Tesla's FSD beta V12, the thing we just saw, and said it was mind boggling. I think this is going to be a bit of a chat GPT moment for self-driving. Did Brad say hockey stick moment? I think he did. Let's listen to what he had to say. That's this morning. First, I got to take a ride in full self-driving 12. How was that? It was mind boggling. Um, I think this is going to be a bit of a chat GPT moment for uh, full self-driving. But what it really, it just reminded me of the magic of this moment, Tesla rebuilding their models for how they do self-driving around imitation learning and all this interesting stuff going on over there. Like, it, it, you know, I think they probably made more progress in the last 12 months than in the last seven years. Wow, in terms that's of, a big statement. In terms of what's going on there. And, and it's- That most certainly is a big statement and it most certainly is reasonable. Why? Since Tesla is pioneering here, leading so far out in front, they have no other examples and references for how best to do things. They keep running into roadblocks and local maximums and, oh shit, that's probably not the best approach. What can we do here? They take three steps forward, five steps back, two forward, one back, etc. But the big breakthrough moment, as I said, at the time when we saw the first demo of V12 with Musk driving around, trying to find Zuck, seeing what this software in the span of less than one year had become capable of doing, without any heuristics, the deletion of more than 300,000 lines of code explaining road rules, what to do in this situation, how to navigate traffic lights, what a stop sign is, etc. Seeing what it was able to do, the emergent properties of driving fairly well, based only on being fed videos of good human drivers, was a watershed moment. And as I said at the time, seemed likely that Tesla now has a clearly illuminated path to solving autonomy, whereas previously there were a lot of unknown unknowns. Now, it is my strong belief that it's simply a matter of time. They have the solution. Train purely on video. No heuristics. More data in, more training, better capabilities. Next minute, you've solved autonomy, you've matched human capabilities in terms of safety, then exceeded, then far exceeded. This is, in essence, what Brad is getting at, in my opinion. Everything that Tesla did in the prior more than half a decade was really just gain experience in what not to do, in learning lots of dead ends, but don't make the mistake of thinking they didn't accumulate a fuck ton of invaluable data, which they're training on. And of course, very small brain skeptics point and laugh and go, look, Tesla changed the way they're doing things. I don't know what they're doing. Failing to understand, again, due to small brain syndrome, that the very fact that Tesla is discovering dead ends just goes to show how far ahead of anyone else attempting to solve autonomy they are. It's gonna be a few years from now that other companies start pursuing dead ends that Tesla's already abandoned. Maybe even a decade, by the way. Shout out to LiDAR. <laughs> Let's not go there. So I definitely agree with Brad here. This is a huge deal. Of course, it's not as sexy as Cybertruck, so it's not getting a huge amount of discussion. But ladies and gentlemen, 
don't be surprised if we do see a hockey stick moment in terms of self-driving capabilities out of seemingly nowhere once tesla has a bit more training compute up and running which is the major bottleneck right now it's not data it's training just don't say i didn't warn you it's going to be rolled out here it's already rolled out to i think 5000 people and so like people are going to start experiencing that and i think we're having more and more of these moments right because this substrate we're going to talk a lot about today ai yeah uh and just the compute like what it unlocks you should definitely ignore brad he doesn't know what he's talking about i don't know what i'm talking about the experts after all do and they say that tesla is just a car company and therefore nothing to say here move along want more content early access bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy allowing me to do a lot more every day including using my brain more and using my body more i highly recommend you guys and girls check it out it's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps it's got 75 high quality vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress plus if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com smr you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin d3 and k2 but don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, 
when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month. And if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month. And if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.